What's up guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be testing the LCD Steam Deck Rocking My Mark 9.1 backplate against the Steam Deck OLED on cooling performance. Both Steam Decks are up to date on firmware and BIOS. Steam Decks are plugged in during testing with at least a 90% charge on both. Brightness on the LCD Steam Deck is set to 90% and the OLED is about a little bit over 50%. The LCD has been running a little bit longer than the OLED from when I started the timer. Here at the 10 minute mark, the LCD Steam Deck has peaked at 70 on the GPU, 59 on the CPU with a fan speed of 5400 RPMs. And on the OLED, we have peaked at 72 on the GPU and 68 on the CPU with a fan speed of 4900 RPMs. The 10 minute mark, the LCD Steam Deck is winning. Both Steam Decks are propped up slightly, mainly because the OLED is propped up with uh, the cable plugged in on top of the LCD one. So to match that, I went ahead and just propped up the LCD one up slightly to mimic the OLED. The Steam Deck OLED is rocking the JSOX cover, but I have not seen any temperature fluctuations between it on or off. And if there are any, it's probably marginal at best. Here at the 30 minute mark, the LCD Steam Deck is pretty much the same with a peak temperature on the GPU of 71 and 60 on the CPU and speed of 5400. The OLED Steam Deck is pretty much the same too, peaking temperature at the GPU of 72 and 69 on the CPU with a fan speed of 4900 RPM. During this time of filming, the room temperature is 22.22 degrees Celsius, about 72 degrees Fahrenheit. Now at the 45 minute mark, the LCD Steam Deck with the Mark 9.1 backplate has a max temp on the GPU of 72 and 60 on the CPU with a fan speed of 5400. On the Steam Deck OLED, pretty much the same GPU peaking at 72, 68 on the CPU and a fan speed of 5100 RPMs. Here in Horizon Zero Dawn, the LCD Steam Deck rocking the Mark 9.1 backplate is cooler than the OLED in terms of CPU temperature. GPU temperature is pretty much the same, fan speeds up by 300 on the LCD, but still running cooler than the OLED. Next and final test is in Cyberpunk, but before we get into that, in the BIOS, both fast and slow PPT is set to manual and at 15,000 and the UMAF frame buffer is set to four gigs on both Steam Decks. Both Steam Decks are set to the Steam Deck preset on Cyberpunk with 800p as resolution. Again, like the test before, the LCD Steam Deck was running quite a bit longer than the OLED prior to starting the clock. The 10 minute mark, the LCD Steam Deck has peaked at 74 on the GPU and 64 on the CPU with a fan speed of 5400. And on the Steam Deck OLED, we have a max temperature of 71 on the GPU and 69 on the CPU with a fan speed of 5200 RPM. During testing, both Steam Decks are not running the Fantastic plugin or Power Tools. Here at the 20 minute mark, the LCD Steam Deck has peaked at 75 on the GPU and 64 on the CPU with a fan speed of 5700 RPM. On the Steam Deck OLED, we have a max temp of 72 on the GPU and 69 on the CPU with a fan speed of 5200 RPM.
here at the 30 minute mark temperatures are pretty much the same as they were at the 20 the lcd steam deck with the mark 9.1 backplate has peaked at 75 and 64 on the cpu with the fan speed still at 5700 whereas the oled has peaked at 72 still on the gpu and 70 on the cpu with a fan speed of 5200 at the 30 minute mark both steam decks are pretty much running at the same temperatures as they were at the 20 minute mark which gives us pretty much similar results as we did in Horizon Zero Dawn where the LCD Steam Deck rocking the Mark 9.1 backplate trades blows on GPU cooling but always wins on CPU cooling. After testing these two games we can deduce that the Mark 9.1 backplate gives at least similar if not better results in cooling than the Steam Deck OLED. To have some trade-offs it has a external fan that needs to be powered but you also have a access to the M.2, so a larger storage bay and possible GPU plugin is made available. There we go, the Mark 9.1 really stands on its own ground. If you guys are interested in picking up one for yourself, we still have a few available at DIYPoppy.net. But other than that, guys, thank you for watching. I'll catch you on the next one.